This is a really great article, said Mr Redjeb, a teacher. Mr Redjeb, a teacher, said this article was really great. Those were examples of direct and indirect speech, which we're going to look at together today. Okay, welcome back to another round of our countdown game. You will need a notepad and a pen. Remember, the eight boxes behind me were filled with vowels and consonants. You then have 30 seconds to make the longest word you can, and you're playing against me. Okay, let's fill the boxes. Get ready. 30 seconds starts now. Time's up, let's check some answers. Okay, after checking the answers, the top word you could have got today was greater, which is a seven letter word. I was close, I got great, which is five letters. If only I'd added that ER ending. Well done if you managed to beat me today. So today we're gonna to look at direct and indirect speech, particularly how we can use these for quotes in our newspaper article. So in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at using direct and indirect speech. When we're writing, there are two ways to write the words spoken by a character or person. These are called direct speech or indirect or reported speech. In direct speech sentences, we would narrate spoken words like this. Goodbye, shouted Tom as he left the park. If we were writing an indirect speech sentence, we would narrate the spoken words like this. As he left the park, Tom shouted goodbye. Let's break down another example in a bit more detail. So here's an example of some direct speech. I bid you farewell, Earthlings, shouted Iggy from his spaceship. You can see in purple, the exact words of the speaker are enclosed in inverted commas or speech marks. In the blue is the direct speech. The exact words that the speaker said or quoted, there's no change to the content or the order. There's also a correct bit of punctuation used before the inverted commas close, in this case an exclamation mark. And then the last bit in green is there is often a reporting clause to explain who said the speech, so Iggy shouting it. Sometimes this reporting clause can be extended with adverbs, subordinate clauses or prepositional phrases to explain how, where or when the speech was said. This reporting clause can appear before or after the spoken words, in this case it appears after. So now we're looking at indirect or reported speech. We can see from the sentence below things have changed. From his spaceship, Iggy bid farewell to the Earthlings. In indirect speech, no inverted commas or speech marks are used. You might find the actual words of the speaker are often changed. The spoken words may need to be put into the correct tense, or extra words may need to be added, and pronouns may need to be changed. There is also no reporting clauses within indirect or reported speech. However, an adverb or prepositional phase to explain more about how, where or when the speech was said can be added if needed. Now we know both types and the differences between the two types of speech, let's look at some more examples. We're going to have a look now at spotting direct and indirect speech. So this section is taken from a newspaper. I'll read it to you. Admitting disappointment at missing out on a team medal, Justin Gatlin promised supporters that the team had given it all they could and refused to criticise the official's decision, but did apologise to the US fans. So what type of speech is this? Pause the video now and just say it aloud for me. Tell me the reason why as well. Have you figured it out? Let's have a look. This is a passage of indirect speech. We can tell because it has no inverted commas or reporting clause. It tells the reader what Justin Gatlin promised his supporters. Let's have a look at another example. So here's another example from another newspaper article. It's a brilliant feeling. It's been a long road. I'm happy, but I'm relieved. It's great to be in the history books as one of the greatest. I'm proud of myself, he told reporters. 
What type of speech is this? Again, pause the video and be ready to tell me why and give me the reasons. Have you managed to figure it out? Here we go. This is a passage of direct speech. We can tell because it does have inverted commas, other speech punctuation, and it has a reporting clause after the speech. Now you're going to have a go at writing direct and indirect speech. Let me show you. Look at the photograph. Can you write the indirect speech for the photo? I've got an example of direct speech here you could use to help you structure your indirect speech. The championship driver shrieked, we won the race. Could you have a go at turning that direct speech into indirect speech? Pause the video and have a go now. Then come back and we'll have a look at the answer. Are you ready? Let's have a look at the answer then. This is my example of indirect speech. Yours might change slightly, but they should be relatively the same. The championship driver shrieked that they had won the race. Again, I haven't used any inverted commas in my indirect speech. That's the main key difference. Let's have a look at another example. So here's another photograph. This time I want you to write the direct speech for the photo. This is my indirect speech. As she was taking the photograph, the girl pleaded for her dad to say cheese. Pause the video again and have a go at changing that indirect speech to direct speech. Remember, you must use inverted commas when writing direct speech. Have a go now. Have you had a go? Let's have a look. Here's the direct speech. Say cheese, Dad, pleaded the girl as she was taking the photograph. Hopefully you included those inverted commas and the correct bit of punctuation. You can also see that there's a reporting clause after the speech has ended. Now it's your turn to have a go at doing both. Here's a picture. Can you write an example of direct and indirect speech for the photo? This is up to you. I'm not gonna give you any answers this time. It's up to you to have a go at writing an example of direct and indirect speech for the photo. Once you've done that, come back. We've got one last thing to look at. Now that you've had a go and understand direct and indirect speech, if you're in my year five class, there's an, there's an attachment on Google Classroom for you to have a go at filling out a little worksheet to do. I like to think about this though, moving forward. You can use a mixture of direct and indirect speech in a newspaper report. The best kind of articles I find contain both. You might also want to give more details about the person who is speaking, like this example below. This is very relevant for my year five class because we're looking at writing about Colonel Thomas Moore this week in our newspaper. Here's an example of my direct speech you could have in an article. The Honourable Colonel Thomas Moore shared a message of hope to the nation saying, the sun will shine on us again. That's direct speech. You can tell because I've got my inverted commas and the correct punctuation. But you might also notice I've put my reporting clause at the start of the sentence this time which is fine. It's still direct speech because I'm using my inverted commas. Here's an example of indirect speech then. Colonel Thomas Moore gave a message of hope by promising the sun would shine on the nation again. So you see, I've moved some of the details around. I've changed a little bit of the speech so it makes more sense in that indirect version. You could use either of those in your article. You're now in a really good position to write a good newspaper report. You know about all the features and you know about how to use indirect and direct speech for your quotes. Good luck, enjoy yourself and I'll see you soon.